Tomorrow, the Supreme Court will consider which cases to add to their docket this term. One case, which looks at just how just our justice system is, is the subject of a new short documentary, Unjustify the Unchecked Powers of America's ju Justice System. The chief prosecutor, the U.S. attorney, does supervise the assistant U.S. attorneys. But who's supervising the U.S. attorney? Producer Nicholas McKinney interviewed several judicial experts for his documentary, and he joins me now, along with former Solicitor General Paul Clement, the lead lawyer for the case in question. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. What was the crime that Shalom Rabashkin committed in this particular case? Well, the crime that he was convicted of was bank fraud. He was also accused of a number of immigration violations, but those were never ultimately prosecuted. So it was one count, uh, well, it, was, it was essentially a bank fraud conviction. Uh, Nicholas McKinney, tell me what drew you to this case in the first place. Uh, well, my partner and I had been looking for uh, to, to make a film about the a justice system, um, and uh, a colleague drew our attention to Mr. Rubashkin's uh, case. Um, and when we began looking at it, it seemed like it was kind of this perfect storm of um, a continuing very aggressive prosecution, ultimately um, a very draconian sentencing. Um, and so we, we began following it some time ago. And, um, you know, it's, it's brought forward these issues of uh, prosecutorial discretion and how sentencing guidelines are used that we see as national issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, explain this to me. He was originally charged. Uh, with these immigration violations, but that was shelved, there, correct? That never went to trial? Never went to trial because the government went first on this bank fraud theory and they got such a tremendous conviction and potential sentence from that that there was really no reason for them to pursue the immigration counts mm -hmm. at that point. And this was a case, I, I assume you believe, where charge after charge after charge was piled on top of one another, needlessly. Well, and what really happened here is under the sentencing guidelines that determine how long a sentence is under the federal system, what really drives the sentence for a fraud count is the so-called amount of the fraud. And in this case, the prosecutors uh, essentially put restrictions on what the Raboshkin family could do such that this meat processing plant, this kosher meat processing plant, went bankrupt. And when that happened, it drove up the amount of the fraud because there were no funds left to pay off the banks. And that was what was really the key to the government initially seeking a life sentence in this case. A life sentence. And then they backed down on that because, you know, a, a whole host of former attorneys generals and solicitors generals objected. But they eventually asked for 25 years, and the judge gave 27 years mm -hmm. for, to a first-time offender. Uh -huh. uh, not surprising, given that, that you learned, and uh, Nicholas McKinney, you learned that the, the judge, against all precedents, had been in close contact with the prosecution in this case? Yeah, um, actually after Mr. Rubashkin was sentenced, um, uh, Freedom of Information Act documents came to light that showed that the judge in the case had met uh, with prosecutors, with um, Homeland Security, um, for seven months leading up to the, uh, to the raid. Um, of course, um, that's alarming. <laughs> um, it, when, well, I want to find out how alarming that is. You, you have uh, uh, certainly uh, untold experience in a courtroom. How unusual was that? Well, it, it is unusual, and I think that if there's a justification for this coordination, it's that they are going to do all these arrests. It's in a courthouse that doesn't usually have this kind of volume, because if, if there were immigration violations suspected, they'd bring a lot of people in. And so you might think that there would be a need at least to give a heads up, but this went well beyond this. This was months of meetings. And at that point, if the judge has had all those meetings, whether or not it was right to have those meetings, the real question then is, having had all those meetings in the case, is the judge the right judge to sit on that case, or should it be referred to a colleague? Mm -hmm. And that's really what, uh, because Mr. Raboshkin and his lawyers didn't know the details about all these meetings, they weren't in a position to raise that mm -hmm. during the trial. They raised it afterwards, and were told they couldn't. You know, I'm often struck, uh, it, it, looking at this in a broader context, uh, of how often that the, the measure of prosecutorial success is not what's right or what's wrong, but how many victories prosecutors win. It's, it's almost like a, a football, a coach's record in, in the NFL or something like that, which, which strikes me as a terrible miscarriage of justice. Well, it is. You know, there's this great saying that uh, is around the rotunda outside the attorney's general's office that goes roughly that the United States wins its point in court whenever justice is done to one of its citizens. And that really should be the measure. 
But instead, I think in some of these situations, it's how many counts you can bring, what kind of sentence you can get, and that's really, I think, a mistake to lose sight of that very important uh, reminder that, mm -hmm. that's what's important to our justice system is that justice be done, the citizens in court. Nicholas, what can be done to change that dynamic of uh, prosecutors trying to score victories instead of do justice? Uh, well, there, you know, there are some remedies available. There's a bill um, that's sort of languishing in the House right now, S-306, which is to, uh, suggesting a, a National Criminal Justice Reform Act, which would um, increase oversight um, and also, you know, allow some mechanisms where prosecutors can seek guidance from, you know, the Department of Justice, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that, you know, w obviously our hope is that... Uh, the Supreme Court will hear Mr. Rubashkin's appeal um, because it will allow them to rule on some, uh, <clears throat> I guess, gray areas. Okay. Uh, uh, Nicholas, I've got to cut you off right there. We're flat out of time. The name of the movie is Unjustified, the Unchecked Power of America's Justice System, produced by Nicholas McKinney. Paul Clement, thank you very much for joining us. Good to see you.